Is this open design? Can we move this and change the design of the stage? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, thank you so much for inviting us. It's very exciting. Um, I'd like to start by continuing a thread from last year's Open Hardware Summit, referring to a talk by uh, Jeffrey Warren from the Public Laboratory for Open Technology and Science. The Public Lab is um, an open community that collaboratively develops accessible, do-it-yourself, open source t technologies for investigating <clears throat> local environmental health and justice issues. And Jeffrey gave a talk on how to grow and strengthen an open source com uh, community such as the Public Lab by distributing kits through a Kickstarter campaign. He talked also about how to embed open and collaborative principles into objects that Public Lab sends to people by mail, such as the balloon, and, um, the balloon and kite um, mapping toolkit on which we're going to talk. Um, what we'd like to do here today is to continue this thread on open hardware as tools for building communities and problematize it. First, by directing the spotlight to the exclusionary acts, aspects of DIY and open source communities. And second, <clears throat> by connecting civil architecture and open hardware and raising some ideas and questions on how open hardware can actually facilitate wider inclusion by leveraging local and professional knowledge within urban planning processes. <clears throat> so, I got connected to the Public Labs community through my enthusiasm to use the Balloon and Kite Mapping Toolkit in Jerusalem. The, the possibility to create beautiful and engaging photographic maps with residents in the city and around issues and matters of concern spurred my imagination. I saw it as an um, exciting technological and political tool to, for creating new ways of seeing, bypassing governmental and corporate control over geospatial information and shaping um, the way we imagine the urban space and the geography. I call this project Jerusalem One Piece at a Time. And residents have worked with, um, visualized and mapped geospatial information for advocacy. Um, and this affordable and easy to use piece of hardware enabled them to take a step into the materiality of the technological process, into the politics of representation, revealing the biases of the map the stories it tell and the stories it doesn't tell. And people and matters of concern became the focal point of the map. The process of mapping became a site of encounter between people, issues, places, and technological process. Yet, as I was progressing with the workshops in Jerusalem, I realized that creating a photographic map is one thing, and implementing open source principles and practices is another thing, much more complex. And especially when you're working with marginalized groups of people that don't really have the time, the, the confidence, and the resources to participate, to take part in DIY and open source communities. It became clear that if we want to scale the impact of do-it-yourself tools, uh, such as the Balloon and Kite Mapping Toolkit, within the wider urban uh, level, we need to create a locally relevant infrastructure. And this infrastructure needs to be based on implementing open and collaborative principles within local institutions and community centers that are already situated at the crossroads between affected residents, burning issues, and decision makers. Hagit was talking about matters of concern that move inhabitants to act on issues. As an architect, I'm looking at the way that we engage ourselves with other people and their concern through the objects we design. I'm asking how do our material interventions can make things matter and become a potential site for public engagement. 
With th these thoughts, I established in Bezalel Academy for Art and Design in Jerusalem the Civil Architecture Unit for Research and Design. I think one of the interesting issues is in our profession is the shift from scaling to zooming. This, of course, has many different implications. For example, this shift affects the way we see. We see on screen everything on global abstract coordinates in scale of one to one. And then we can always zoom in and zoom out, and it might be great fun, and it's very useful, but it also can have some problems. It's also blurring the distance between representation and reality, and misses the actual relations between things. But moreover, it affects our bodies, our interaction, encounters, and the way we design the space. Addressing this issue, we choose to work in the scale of the neighborhood. We think this is the most important social spatial unit. This is the size that enable radical economical and architectural acts initiated by citizens. And this is the unit that creates the relation between the extra small data of the citizen and the big data of the city. We can look, for example, at LIFTA. LIFTA is the last remaining example of the pre-48-hour Palestinian village whose residents were driven out and dispossessed during the war that constituted the establishment of the State of Israel. It is today part of the city of Jerusalem, an urban biosphere partially inhabited by very low-income Jewish residents. Our unit began its involvement as professional participant in a coalition Save Lifta, initiated by, by both Jewish and Arab residents. We measured, documented things, people, stories, and suggested alternative planning. We've had hundreds of people touring the place through one of our methods for initiating collaborative planning processes, the open tour, that made lift a tangible and relevant for wider publics. We've also created virtual annotated and narrated tours you can watch with a smartphone using a QR code. But after several events, we began to question their effectiveness as a participatory tool, we realize we need to find ways to bring people in earlier in the stage of the design. So we see it as a matter of scale, that through the use of small scale, tangible and collaborative objects, we can take step into the large scale planning processes without losing the sight and touch with the situated ground and an understanding and contribution of residents. Here you can see some work we began to do together, developing in the neighborhood called Kiryat Ayovel in West Jerusalem, which is marked by the authorities as the most important site of the urban renewal in the 10, 20 years, and uh, through top-down planning processes. This process would have dramatic influence on the social structure and the identity of the neighborhood. Together with a strong community center in the neighborhood that has played a significant role in bridging between the municipality and the residents, we established together a center for urban pedagogy that brings together the ideas and practices of the public labs that Hagit was talking about with those of the civil architecture unit and builds an open civil archive by documenting residents' knowledge and perspectives. Um, one of our projects in the neighborhood is mapping the urban biosphere of Vadi Hayuvel, a valley that is planned to undergo development in the coming years. And similarly to the Lifta case that was mentioned, mentioned before by Liat, its biosphere preserves the last remnants of the pre-1948 Palestinian village of Beit Mazmil. It also has wild flowers and animals that live and cross through it, and various forms of informal uses by people living in the area. We began a mapping process, and being both technically and visually engaging, the balloon mapping method enabled us to start our work with a wide range of participants, and um, that, that include children, women, older and younger, bringing them 
into the process and discourse of planning at its very first stages and raise issues of preservation, identity, and memory that were not considered earlier in the planning processes. And together with programmers, we started building the possibility to annotate the map by residents um, and create layers of information that can be later be used um, for a better planning of the valley. So our work is ongoing and we're looking for ways to further develop and advance the connections between civil architecture and open hardware. We have lots of questions and lots of ideas. And maybe to conclude, uh, I'll share with you one of our ideas, um, which is to revisit the open tours um, we've con conducted in LIFTA, thinking whether a tour can become a piece of open hardware. Uh, that would enable us to connect people to act and contribute to a collaborative process of uh, design and planning in the city. Thank you very much. <laughs>